back to Fog Media, folks. I'm your host, Fog. Thank you for joining in. Today, we're gonna take a look at two different devices. Now, one is the old version. This is the Razer turret. Uh, this is Razer's lap board for couch gaming on PC or, or even Xbox, for example. On the new one, this is the Razer turret for Xbox One. This just came out. This is the updated version. Again, a lap board for gaming on your couch. This was 2016. This was 2019, so just came and de was delivered to me today, April 1st, and I bought it back right when they had announced it at CES, and you can pre-order it through Microsoft exclusively, 249, 160. So 159, 169, somewhere in there, depending upon where you bought it. People complained about the pricing on this, I don't know if they had a heart attack when they saw this one. Not quite sure, but let's take a look at these two. I just wanted to show this one to give some kind of perspective of what you're getting into with the brand new one. So the original one came with a nice little insert here, foam inside, kind of gave you a quick start guide. Now the mouse that it came with was much smaller. The whole thing is far more compact. Uh, you could take this apart. It does have a replaceable battery little spot for your USB dongle to go to. It's a nice mouse, has buttons on both sides. Um, you can adjust the DPI as you go. And it has clicks in your wheel. Good looking mouse, good design. Does support Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 is for the included USB dongle. The lab board itself. Chiclet style keys that you'd find on a laptop. Very similar design style of a laptop keyboard, compact. Has a fold out mouse pad. And it is magnetized, it does magnetize the mouse to it a little bit. Maybe a little bit more than some people like, but you can actually have it at an angle where it does not just slide off. You know, normally mice would slide off of a, a pad like that. It's textured underneath with a rubberized style coating so it holds and grips your pant legs or your shorts or your bare legs if you game naked. Who knows? I don't know. This one uh, is a nice design. I like it. It also supports, because this has a 2.4 gigahertz switch and Bluetooth, it does support connecting to something like an Android or even to a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 potentially. It did come with a nice little stand to recharge the actual unit to kind of keep it all together, which is one of the big selling points of it. It's, it's really compact and has a nice spot to keep it by your PC, on your coffee table or whatnot. A USB dongle extension cable, just standard USB cable with a little thing that gives you additional range. What you wanna do is put these up as high as possible. That gives you the longest range. And then it came with a, a custom USB cable that plugs into the back of the charging base. So these, this is kind of bad because, you know, it's, it's proprietary, so you gotta go out there and you gotta find one. If you ruin this one or slam it in some door, it comes with a standard USB plug to charge it with. Good thing here, eh, not so great here. They've, they've actually learned from that mistake. So that's, that's really what came with the unit for 160 bucks. And for the new one, you get about the same, but in a little bit larger form factor. So number one, the mouse is much larger. You take in and put buttons on the side there, but none on this side. You've got two here. Your mouse does click in, go forward, back, standard buttons. Bigger design, you know, much larger design than the original razor turret. This is good. This one's a little tough. You do get some hand cramping. It's quite possible, but it's still a nice design. It's just, they missed on the size, I think. It's a, it's a little too small. This one, nice, very light too. I don't think it's, uh, the battery is replaceable as easily, but um, there is a little spot here if you pick this clip up for your USB dongle that you're on and off and, and setting it up. Then you have obviously a little tiny 2.4 gigahertz dongle for that. 
The board itself is hefty. It probably is double the weight of that. I mean, this thing, it's not gonna slide on you. It's got a palm rest. They've went to mechanical keys, which are really clicky. Awesome. For some people, I have to listen to that all day. Brooks, the guy I do all the shows with on the other channels. That dude has to use one of these and it does get a little bit annoying. He knows I joke with him on that, but. You've got a very nice rubberized bottom. So again, it's gonna grip onto your skin, your pants, whatever you're using. Grab all the dog hair in your house. And then you've got your mouse pad. Again, it does magnetize a little bit, not as much on this one. Um, you can feel it, but it, it definitely moves a lot smoother. I don't know if it's the, the material that it's sliding on, what how they did it, but definitely a little bit smoother. The whole thing is hefty. I mean, it feels like all metal. This thing, I, I'm not worried about it. I don't think it would break. That is a little bit a little more of a concern with that hinge. This one, it's solid. It has two positions, that's fully open. And you slide it in, it has like this really small like area where you can kind of keep it open. And what I believe that's for, they don't tell you, but it fits the mouse almost perfectly. And on the back is a proprietary port. It might be a USB-A, I don't know what this is. It's a smaller USB um, piece, almost looks like a micro HDMI, but I believe it's something like USB-A. And that would allow you to charge with this cable that comes with it into the mouse. And I'll show you that in a minute. Over here you have USB-C, you have a reset. USB-C's for charging, and then you have your power on and off and an LED. Nice unit, heavy, hefty. Hopefully it doesn't cut off circulation to your leg or legs, if you're bipedal, I guess, right? Um, this is the little cable that comes with it. So this will go in here to your Razer mouse to charge it, it's a little tricky getting it in there. Oh, because I got the wrong end. That's, that's, it throws me off, that's a, that's a weird design. There we go. So that's plugged in, then this little end goes right in to the back of your board. And this is what it kind of looks like. And that would allow you to charge it. That's the only reason I can see for having this piece here open up slightly. And it does lock in place like that, so. I take it that's what it's for, because it doesn't come with like a base, like the original. They also included a USB to micro USB to charge the mouse, a longer cable, if you just wanted to charge it. They included a USB-C, nice braided. All the cables are braided, which is awesome. Only one is braided on this, which is just the extension. This actually is, is nice and braided there and USB-C to USB. And then you also got your little handbook and another USB charger. So that's really all that comes with it. Let me close all this up. The one thing they did not include is an extension or a dongle extender like they did with that, which is kind of nice. So you may want to get one of those because again, range, I haven't tested this yet. We'll test it here in a minute. We'll kind of talk about like how it feels and everything um, in real time. But what I've come to find is the higher you can get that micro or that USB dongle, the better your range is going to be in performance. So I think that if you can go get one, it's probably worth it. For 250 bucks, it would have been an easy inclusion. I don't know why they didn't do it. It's kind of weird. But uh, this is the unit here. A couple things really quick that I like about it. Mouse size, light up keyboard. I could do without the mechanical component, mechanical keyboard. I could have been fine if they just put lights on that. They should have. And um, the overall build quality is, is stronger on this. This one wins for compactness you know it looks nice on a coffee table or you know next to your fireplace like I have it here and it, it gives you a single place to charge everything so when you grab it it's already charged this one you're gonna have to dedicate a spot to sit it 
and, and hopefully nothing will fall on it and you can charge it. So let's take a look at these on the PC. Well, we'll just look at this one. This one's really the, the, the reason why I did this video. Um, if, if you'd wanna see that, I could put in another video for it, but let's take a look and see how the performance is, see what we think, and then we'll talk some additional pros and cons and finish up a recap, so. So this is kind of where I sit, mostly when I'm gaming. I actually have a 70 inch TV roughly in front of me, and I sit a little bit further back, and I like to just chill here. There's also a couch and everything, but mainly this is kind of the spot. And this is where I even do recordings and all of that for the shows. So having this unit being able to sit on my legs and, and make it nice and accessible is awesome. The, the little things that I have noticed, um, this is a much larger unit as a whole in terms of length size or length that it takes up. So the other one fits in between the two arms. This one does not. <laughs> it, it actually is at the end of my legs, which is still fine. My knees go out to here and I've got enough room. So it's not gonna be a problem, but I did notice that a little bit bigger. So, and it doesn't have a grip underneath the mouse pad itself. So kind of, I don't know if you're meant to keep your legs together. It doesn't feel as natural and then have this over here, because this is really sturdy. I'm not worried about this breaking, but I would probably have it like right here, but then the grip part is only on my one leg and there's no grip under this. So it's kind of weird why there isn't any grip under this. They could have probably done it, a microfilm kind of thing, just to give you that. But in general, I think it will work. I think it will fit. You can kind of angle it a little bit. And for most people on a couch, you're not gonna have two arms that close together. And even most couch or, or lounge chairs or chairs, they're probably gonna have wider arms. This one does not, but it swivels and all that. So I'm not gonna complain too much. The mouse feels really good. I'm gonna turn the keyboard on. You can kind of see it light up. Uh, might be hard with the lights. If, if I can, I'll uh, do some just video of the chroma itself running. So what I was gonna do here just go in and grab the software that loads in. So I'll show you that on the video. So let's see here, razors. I just want the whole screen to be good. Yeah, we'll just do the whole screen. That'll make it easier. And I probably need to up that resolution. I had it set up for my gaming, so I'm just making some adjustments. I may take it out of the video, who knows. But this is, what you'll see now is the actual video, or the, the is the actual software for the device that when you plug the dongle in, it automatically loads up onto your screen. And it has to do a 265 meg download and that's probably additional software. And then you just click launch, we'll get started. And it should give you the ability to configure the chroma and everything here. Now, obviously they want a password. Which, I wish to see, uh, I don't really use Razer products all that much. Um, I do have the Razer Stargazer. I have the Razer keyboard, the, the two turrets that you saw. Here, and that's about it. And an old razor mouse. Their stuff is good quality. It's just I'm not too far down the road with them, so uh, yeah, I don't need to worry about what deals they're doing. So yes, now you can see kind of in the software, you can adjust the Microsoft mouse or the, the Xbox One edition mouse and the Xbox One edition keyboard. You can adjust the Chroma Connect, the Chroma Studio, the Chroma Visualizer, the U, all the information there and you have your services that they offer like, hey, I wanna register my product or hey, I need to buy more stuff from your store, that kind of stuff. Get some beta feedback. So all in all, I mean, it seems pretty standard. You can do configuration on your mouse, um, you know, your, your hyper shifts, the side buttons, 
hybrid storage, performance, the lighting, you can do calibration. So if you change the effects, you can change quickly or you can do it to cycle through all the colors. I don't mess with that stuff too much. I'll do a second shot of the, the lighting and everything so you can kind of see that. It's changing colors as we go through here. But um, you know, in general, it's uh, just the standard pattern. I'm not doing anything crazy. That, like I said, the mouse does have a little bit of a magnetized, so it doesn't slide off. Even if you're moving, it's not really sliding that far. Most mice would just kind of zip right off. This is magnetized enough to where it keeps it there, but it doesn't allow it to pull from you know, the, the performance of the unit. You can adjust powers, you can turn off the lights, you can do you know the wireless power. So depending upon where you have it, I put my, um, my TV's mounted very high. It's actually only about, oh, I guess a foot from the top of the ceiling. And it's kind of angled just slightly. And at the very tip top, I have the USB dongle. And I put it there by an extension cable I got from Amazon for $9.99. It's their standard like Amazon cables and it allows it to extend the range and it'll work pretty much in my entire living room if I want to sit somewhere else. So pretty standard on a lot of this stuff. The keyboard, again, you can go in, you can turn on gaming mode or turn off gaming mode. Um, you can go in and adjust your lighting, do the exact same effects as the mouse. You can adjust the power, the saving you know the power savings for wireless even so so pretty standard fare it looks like the software uh, also has some profiles so you can probably change things uh, depending upon what you plug into you have your chroma workshop your apps that go with it so you can get the different lights and sync you can create your own with the studio the visualizer itself um, i'm not going to enable well i guess i'll just enable that so you can adjust everything yourself and it's now blinking so it's changed a couple things but i'm going to leave that off for now hue integration for for that you have your macros that you can build and the actual software will hold on to it so nice full software solution for the turret and then I think for everything else, that's, that's probably about it. So we've kind of gone through, we used it for a little bit of the show, you know, to be able to, to kind of show how well it looked. So these are just some of the effects that you can have that are built in using the Chroma Studio. So right now we're using the Wave and that works for the mouse as well as the keyboard itself. But they also give you, so you can even layer them, but the standard ones are Ambient awareness, you have audio meter, I'm gonna have to take some of these off, we'll just dump them. You have breathing, so another effect. I'll actually go ahead and cut that off and we'll choose that to be on everything. You can choose it by individual keys, uh, rows of keys, you can even draw out the keys that you want it to be. So they, they actually give you a lot of different features. And we'll save that. So now it should be the breathing. Now I have a top row that is blinking a lot. I'm curious as if there's something wrong with the actual keyboard itself. I just started to notice it when we were finishing up the video and it, it just blinks off and on. I think that it might be an issue. I'm gonna have to reach out to the folks at Razer, see if they can take a look at that. We'll put on the fire, see if we can get anything better. So this is gonna be more reds. Yeah, you can see that thing's blinking a lot. It's hard to see. It looks like a little fire. I don't know if I can flip the keyboard up a little bit more. That may be a better look at it. But those keys are definitely blinking at the top. And this is a brand new unit, fresh out of the box. They didn't ship it to me for free or anything or 
give me this. This is for a review. This is just me spending my money. And uh, yeah, kind of a little disappointing if that's actually really an issue. I think it is because it's not going away. Let's see if we can do Starlight. This is not a complaint video either. I'm just letting everybody know that uh, this is brand new out of the box. And it's kind of doing that little blinking thing. Now it's not blinking on here. So this is the star, starlight mode in the studio. It also could be an update. Yeah, that's quite possibly. And then we'll go back to the wave. There's a few others like wheel and static. But uh, we'll just go back to the wave, select everything once again. And we'll save that. So there we go. That's your wave color. Again, with the mouse matching right in there with it. So yeah, I don't see the blinking on the, the wave, so I hope it's kind of just maybe one of the... It's just one of the settings or something, and they'll maybe do an update and fix that. But um, overall, happy with the weight of the unit, happy with the size of the unit. I think in general, this is a um, pretty, pretty solid package that consumers can expect to use a lot if you, if you do a lot of couch gaming, which is you know, potentially a popular thing now that you've got it supporting Xbox, so your console gamers can jump in on it. I'm not a huge Xbox fan, so I'm not gonna show it working with an Xbox, but in general, I think that most, uh, most people will be pretty happy with it, that it does support that. So one more additional comparison. Here is the keyboard of the original turret compared to the size of the new turret. It's, it's essentially the, without the palm rest, that's what you're looking at in terms of size. In terms of space as a whole, let's move the mouse here and just set it on top. You can see that there's a definite increase in, in width or length of the unit itself. Um, that's what I was saying on that chair. It hits the arms, which uh, kind of is a little take a little uh, little um, disappointing, but in general, I don't have a problem with it. I think I can make it work. So I think in general, the build quality of this is awesome. Um, I like the weight. I wish it was a little narrower for this chair. I think that that's, it's specific to me. The mouse itself, nice solid size, a little bit light. It could be a little bit heavier, but in general, can't complain about that. The light up keyboard is a huge plus for definitely playing in the dark when you want to enjoy gaming without having to you know kind of look down and try to angle it towards the tv to see what you're pressing i'm not a touch gamer you know touch typist i work much better with it lit up and i have that on my laptop and that's the way i would work and, and this is very similar to that this for size and compact design is amazing but Without the light, it's kind of disqualified, really. It's it, keyboards without a light these days, it's a necessity. So I'm not happy necessarily that they've increased the price by, well, almost $90. But for me, for what I play, I really enjoy a lot of strategy like Frostpunk. Um, I like all sorts of games, every game. but. You know, definitely strategy games, you can't choose to play really with a controller. The Steam controller does give you some options, but it's just not really as nice as having everything easily accessible on the mouse and keyboard. And if you're an FPS shooter or an FPS fan, obviously that, you know, that detail that you can get with the mouse and keyboard is so much greater than you can get on a controller. So most people really enjoy it and, and accept the mouse and keyboard as the dominant 
device they like to play with. So in general, I have to say it's pricey. It's not for everybody, but for me, it definitely does what I need it to do. And for the increased cost, the $90 I can live with because I use it all the time. I game in here constantly and I will probably use this every night. And I'll also use it when I'm recording and doing any other work for the channel. So I would say, yes, it's worth it. And I'm glad that they brought the product out. I hope to see it go down in price or a new version come out that doesn't necessarily have to support Xbox to drop that price down. Another nice inclusion would be the extension cable for the USB dongle so you can get that really as high as possible. Cut down on the battery usage and, and in general just give you better performance. Um, but overall, if they shrunk it just a tiny bit for my chair, it'd be perfect. That's it folks. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Razer turret for the Xbox and PC. I wish they'd say kind of just the Razer turret two but they, they really have that Xbox edition on there. I know they're working the deal with Microsoft. I hope you enjoyed a look at that. If you do want to take a closer dive at this one, we can do that. Just leave it in the comments. Um, but, but in general, this was good at the time. It's, it's been surpassed by this unit. And in general, I probably won't ever really use this again, only for secondary stuff that I'm doing. It, it'll definitely be the new Razer turret. Um, even at the price. And I hope you stop back. Please subscribe, like the video, definitely hit the notification bell so you see when things go live. I do shows for Wild Tangent. We also have the weekly tangent show on Thursdays for YouTube. What else do we do it on? Twitch and Periscope. And then we have a show called Games Gone Wild on Facebook on Wednesdays. So check those out. Subscribe to me and you'll be able to know where that stuff is because I talk about it constantly. And join me for the next time when we take a look at a new product that's not paid for by a company. I'm actually the one that buys this stuff. I like to give the full review. I don't care really what they have to say in general. The product's nice. I think it's a little expensive, but for me, it's going to be used every day. And um, maybe that helps. Thanks again, folks. Have a great week. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.